welcome back to NunoSolutions.com. My name is Nuno, and in this episode five, I'm going to show you guys how to set default values in columns when you're creating a table. Where we left off in the last video, we had a jobs table. We were showing you guys how to do the identity inserts. So we're just going to drop this table, and we're going to, and we're going to create a table with a default created date. And to do that, I'm just going to copy and paste my statement that I have here. It should look very familiar for you by now if you watched the previous videos, but we're creating a jobs table and we have a job ID, that's a primary key, and it's identity seed starts at one and increments by one. We have a job type uh, column, which is required, it's not null. Job ID and job type are the only required fields in this table. And what we're gonna do here with the created date and time, we're gonna specify this default. Default keyword is the keyword to specify a default for any column. But since this is a data type is a date and time, you have to make sure it's a date time you use the get date function, that's guaranteed it will give you the current time. So that's a good way whenever you want to set a created date automatically to automatically populate the created date for you. Let's just test that out. We're going to create this table and I'm going to do an insert statement where I'm not going to specify any of the date fields. I'm not even going to specify a job ID because job ID is auto incremented actually. So the only thing I'm actually going to pass into this jobs table is going to be the job type. So we're inserting into the jobs. We want to add a job type and the value we're going to be entering is going to be install 32 gigabytes of RAM. So we're going to highlight that and execute it. Now we're going to highlight the select statement beneath it just to take a look at the data. And you can see the created date got automatically populated. And now if you want to look at the default value, you can go into your jobs table and look for this constraints folder, expand that, and you'll see this little verbiage here. The F means default jobs, and then this is created date. Kind of a weird name. There is a way to control the name. So let me show you guys how you can create a, de a name default. The way you would do that, because I mean, you could rename it here. And like really, if it was me, I would, I would rename this to created date, default jobs created date. And that's actually, yes, and I'm going to refresh. And that would make more sense when you're looking at the constraints. It's always a good idea to name them because it, it'll make more sense when you look at them. And SQL Server kind of does this random naming thing so that to make sure that your constraints are all unique, like the names. So let me delete this constraint. And we're going to come in here where we have the default get date. We're going to go into the next line and we're going to say constraint. And we're going to give it a, the name that we just specified over here. Actually, let me refresh to make sure that you guys can see that, that uh, it actually is not there anymore, right? The strain is gone. We're going to name this default underscore jobs underscore created date, right? And now, if you create the table, I'm actually going to drop this table. And I'm going to hit refresh on the tables folder here. So make sure it's really gone. And now I'm going to ex execute this create statement that contains the name default. So let's refresh tables, fan the jobs table, go down to constraints. And now you can see you have a constraint where the date and time is named what you want it to be. So the reason why naming it is so important is that if you want it as a D, especially if you're a DBA, if you want to script up out stuff and post from a dev environment to a test environment and then a test environment to a production environment, and you want to manipulate the constraints unless the names are the same in all environments because that's the thing if you have an automatic like if you just don't use a named constraint then you create a table or add a column with a constraint sql server can name it differently depending on which environment you're adding that to so it's very important to make sure when you add a default or any type of constraint for, for that matter you make sure you name it properly that's it for this video guys thanks very much take care bye